this was one of my very best friends from high school. He's like, hey, come play this. So we do that. And probably a month in, I'm already the best player on the team. And I'm starting to lead the team. And there was a lot of things that my my friend kind of said to me and encouraged me and just showed me that I could be such a good leader and I could be someone like that to others. And I think it helped me realize that I need to be that kind of leader and that kind of encouragement to myself and do things differently than I had done in the past. Jaman, yeah, Jaman. I hope you like Jaman too. Welcome, one and all, to JamanCast. This podcast is dedicated to celebrating video games and delivering video game news and interviews. I adore video games, and I love sharing that every week, so stick around. I think you'll have a good time. Today I have the What's News segment, where I go over this week's video game news, keeping in the know for what's going on. And then there's also this week's interview. It's with someone who has played at the upper echelons of competitive gaming, I got to talk to Casanova. He's a Heroes of the Storm professional player. And I got to talk to him about his life, how video games fit into it, and what it was like to have his esports career shut down almost instantly with no warning. Although there's some somber moments, it was a delightful interview. And I hope you stick around to listen to it and learn more about this man. Before we get to all that, I have a few ways that you can elevate your show experience. I have a number of ways that you can join in, be a part of the show. I have a phone number you can call. It's 949-407-9198. You can leave a message. I might put it in the show. I have a Discord. You can join. It's in the dis- show description. I have a Twitter. It's at Jamin the Shaman. And then I also have Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Jamin. All ways you can be involved and be more into this show, if you so desire. If not, all good. With all that out of the way, let's get this podcast started. What's news, everyone? Welcome back to the What's News segment. I'm so glad to have the What's News segment back. After one week, it felt like it was missing, okay? I felt like I had not done my due diligence, and I'm happy to be back now giving you the news. So let's get right into it. It's going to be a lot of stuff going over what happened in 2019. Because, listen, it's 2020, boys. New decade. So let's talk about it. Stream Elements. This is the first thing I want to talk about. They, Stream Elements released some numbers comparing the major streaming platforms in 2019. Twitch, Facebook, Mixer, and YouTube Gaming were all on this list of comparing comparison sites. Okay, So some things to take out of their report. Twitch is still the major leader in streaming, but all of the platforms grew this year. Mixer and Facebook Gaming grew the most in viewership hours. So Twitch had 7.7 billion viewership hours in 2018. It increased that by 20% to 9.4 billion hours. YouTube, on the other hand, increased 16% to top off at 2.6 billion hours in 2019. Mixer had a relatively large increase with a 149% increase. So Twitch has only a 20% increase. YouTube had a 16% increase. And Mixer had a 149% increase. They topped off at 353 million hours watched. The largest increase, though, is going to Facebook Gaming. They went from 114 million hours in 2018. They stopped at 356 million hours in 2019. It was a 210% increase. That's huge. But it's also dauntingly small if you realized what just happened. I was talking in billions of hours when discussing Twitch and YouTube. Facebook and Mixer are still growing significantly, but they're also still in the millions of hours category, not the billions like the YouTube and Twitch is seeing. Other things the report pointed out, for the first time in Twitch's existence, League of Legends was the second most popular game back in 2018. But in 2019, it beat Fortnite again, and it reclaimed its top spot as the most viewed game on Twitch All of 2019, League of Legends, most viewed game on Twitch, all of 2019. World of Warcraft, 
Mm-mm. Yeah, let's talk about it. World of Warcraft jumped from ninth place in 2018 to 7th place in 2019. So when World of Warcraft Classic launched, it set a milestone for weekly viewers on Twitch with over 50 million hours watched in its first full week of availability. It also helped propel Asmongold to the top streamer on Twitch for three consecutive months. Just a lot of really cool things to think about and look at when it comes to this report. Streaming and the services and the games, all are things that aren't going away. And it's understanding where they've been and what it's what the trends look like. They can help set us up for understanding the context of the changes that are going to occur in the future. So I want to move on to another report. Super Data released a report detailing the year 2019 in review. Talking about revenue generated by video games and video game content. So... Here's some highlights from that report, thanks to GameIndustry.biz. So the games industry generated an impressive $120.1 billion with its digital content last year. That's a lot of money. $120.1 billion, more than in any other year to date. The games and interactive media industry grew by 4% when compared to 2018. Within the digital game segment, mobile unsurprisingly generated the most revenue at $64.4 billion, followed by PC generating $29.6 billion, and then console with $15.4 billion. The grand total was reached by factoring in the $6.5 billion generated by gaming video content across the likes of Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, Facebook, plus the $6.3 billion from XR which encompasses augmented, mixed, and virtual reality. Free-to-play games still lead the market, accounting for $4 out of every $5 generated. And mobile now represents 74% of all free-to-play revenue, thanks in part to the ongoing success of Tencent's Honor of Kings and the Candy Crush Saga games. Focusing specifically on the digital games market, mobile, PC, console, Free-to-play accounted for 80% of all digital games revenue last year. They had some more predictions about the future. The games industry is looking to continue its growth, and with the release of Microsoft and Sony's new consoles, we might see a record year in revenues. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about this week, because honestly, it was a pretty slow week. A lot of just year-in-review things, and all of these kind of hit the same beats. But we're going to talk about The Witcher author. CD Projekt Red signed a new agreement and ended the dispute with the author of The Witcher series, Andrzej Sapkowski, who I'm naming as I Am Butchering, has come to an agreement with them. CD Projekt will continue to have the rights to the IP in video games, graphic novels, board games, and merchandise. Sapkowski had signed over the games to The Witcher to... CD Projekt for an upfront fee. He signed over the rights to the games. Excuse me. He turned down any potential royalties to them. He told Eurogamer later about the deal. He said, I quote, I was stupid enough to sell them the rights to all my novels. They offered me a percentage of their profits. I said, no, there will be no profit at all. Give me all my money right now. The whole amount. It was stupid. I was stupid enough to leave everything in their hands because I didn't believe in their success. But who could foresee their success? I couldn't, end quote. Following this, he publicly demanded over $16 million in royalties from CD Projekt, claiming that under Polish law, he had been wrongfully underpaid for his work. CD Projekt dismissed the claim, but he said, <clears throat> but they said, quote, it is the company's will to maintain good relations with authors of works which have inspired CD Projekt Red's own creations, Consequently, the board will go to great lengths to ensure amicable resolution of this dispute. However, any such resolution must be respectful of previously expressed intents of both parties, as well as existing contracts. End quote. It appears that the desired amicable resolution has been achieved. The statement from CD Projekt Red states that, quote, The agreement satisfies and fully clarifies the need and expectations of both parties, past and present, and sets out a framework for the future cooperation between the two sides. So it's great. I'm glad that they're all happy and that everyone's been treated semi-fairly. I mean, listen, the guy turned down all the money, and now he's going to get some money 
for the success. So even though he said, no, I don't want it, I don't want it, they're going to give it to him uh, because he changed his mind and they said, you know what, we understand. We're not going to just hold you to it. We're going to, you know, because listen, they would. They could go to court and just deal with it for years. He would be screaming, 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 and they'd be totally within their rights to deny him anything because he agreed. But maybe they don't want to do the court fees. Maybe there's good. Maybe he's making too much noise, or maybe they're just genuinely good people. I don't know. Everyone seems to love CD Projekt, so maybe they're genuinely just a nice organization. All right. Well, that's everything I got for you guys for the what's news segment. I hope you enjoyed that news. It was very short, very sweet, very succulent. But we have a fantastic interview with Casanova. He is a streamer. He used to play Heroes of the Storm professionally. He's a League of Legends player. He commentates team fight tactics. We had a great sit down. We talk, found out about him, discussed some things. I hope you guys enjoy. So here's the interview. <music> Hello everyone, welcome to another Jamin Cast interview. This day I am joined by a man who, he played Heroes of the Storm, he plays an Enhancement Shaman in Classic, I can't be closer to my own heart, uh, but I want to have him on, we're going to talk about all the things that make him him, and video games with a specific focus there. It's Casanova Hots, or Casanova, not Casanova Hots, we'll just say Casanova, right? Is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casanova is good. Casanova Hots, of course, being the handles everywhere, until I can... Uh remove the hots from it but yeah. you know we'll see it'll take a, it's gonna take a sec all right so the first thing i want to ask you and it's uh what was the first game that you ever played that left an impression on you yeah so it's interesting i feel like i'll probably have an answer that maybe you haven't gotten before but mm-hmm. i would say um chess actually uh it's a little bit different it's yeah, not nice. quite the the normal it's not it's not not even quite a video game, but um, yeah, no, I love I, uh, I learned how to play chess from my grandfather when I was three years old. Is when I started playing chess, and it kind of set me on this trajectory of gaming and puzzles and just solving uh, problems like that, and wow. just competing. It's definitely like always something that sprung from uh, learning chess when I was very little. So chess, from what I understand, I don't I don't play chess in any way to know understand. Like I I, I know there's like strategy and there's techniques and there's things you know. But as people I've talked to have said that chess is one of those games that's like fun to play, and then you kind of like, and then when you start actually playing it, it's it starts losing its fun. I don't know if that's true. I mean, obviously there's people who love it, so I I can't imagine it. But it starts losing its like. Um, once you know the optimum strategy, like that's the, or like there's only like this many strategies. I don't know. I mean, it seems it's been around for thousands of years. Yes. So. so chess is actually one of the games that's a bit harder to solve because there's so many different baits and gambits and different things that you can do against other skilled opponents that it's never quite exactly a solved game. That's why there are grandmasters that can, can still beat the machines that were designed to beat them. Even though they don't win very often, they can still beat these robots with machine learning that have been able to like master the game. Yeah. Uh, so it's very much uh, a game that continues to have uh, skill growth longer and longer and lasting forever. Um, very much, it's a it's a highly competitive, highly highly strategic game, and it's all about that thinking ten moves ahead uh, kind of thing that really propelled me i think in esports as well but there are no patch notes in chess how does that work how do, yeah how do... there are no patch notes so it does come down to the different strategies that people have kind of mastered over time and then it's the interactions between those strategies and the different combinations of strategies that you come up with right. in order to play against other people it just always impresses me whenever I see a game that I mean, obviously chess is one of the, is is his classic game, um, but we're always like everyone's worried about these games, these these online games, these services, and Heroes of the Storm, World of Warcraft, and and any other competitive League of Legends, and they always have to patch in order to like fix things. But I guess they're always adding things too, right? They're still adding new characters and new modes and maps and stuff. So that's something. It's a live service. It's not. It's not like chess is selling you like skin packs. I guess they are. You just you can you can literally just buy a new chess board. <laughs> buy a different board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's it is interesting, and and I don't know how to fully describe it with chess because I did stop playing um pretty long time ago. Honestly, uh, I played for about ten years and stopped when I was about thirteen. 
Um, but a lot of video games, which I play a lot more now, obviously, uh, I can speak more on the fact that uh, certain patches get solved. But I also think that a lot of times these patches that are quote unquote solved are not actually fully solved. Right. It's just people get to a meta and they perfect an idea of that meta and they start to play it perfectly. And even if people have an idea on how to break that, uh, they don't have it as practiced or perfected as the tactics that are currently being used and considered overpowered. So even when they bring it in, if it might have been good, it still gets crushed by the strategies that are currently being used. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you don't see that growth and development on these patches because a new patch will come out and then it changes and then it happens more. So some of these games that have potential to not be solved at a certain point get to a point where people think they are solved and then they're patched and changed. So they can never purely be solved. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think there's any game... Uh, like, I think StarCraft 2 is one of those games that like people will say is solved at some point. And, or, you know, but it, even StarCraft Brood War, uh, which I love. I love watching WarCraft 3 Brood War games just to see, like, how insane... Like, And if you, you can follow the meta, that changes so much as uh, these games are not being patched that often anymore. Um it's, it's, it's incredible, really. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people still come up with strategies to, to beat others. It's not like just one specific race or one specific player using a specific strategy is winning every single time. Like, there are still changes in who wins. So that's why I think, like, a lot of these games, even though they do patch often, and I, I agree with them patching often, I think keeping it fresh is, is a good thing. I just don't think that they're as solved as a lot of people would argue. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your grandfather taught you chess. Uh, and that's what I wanted to ask you about is your family and like growing up. Uh, so you were gaming and uh, not necessarily video games, but, but chess and, and board games. And I'm, I'm assuming maybe card games. Like what was your, what was life like growing up? What was what games were you playing? Yeah. So growing up, I, I played of course chess and uh, I, I, did learn a lot of card games, cocktail, bridge, all those certain things when I was even very young, you know, six and seven years old. Mm. Um, but overall, gaming wasn't a huge thing for my family. I mean, my uh, mom was a dancer. My dad was an actor. They both uh, were very heavily into the arts and, you know, music and and trying to do sports at a young age because they did sports as well. So I played soccer. I played basketball. I played football. Mm -hmm. I did. I played all the traditional sports. I was pushed into music classes. Uh, we weren't ever supposed to have video games. Uh, my godfather actually sent me and my brother an Xbox when I was five. An Xbox. And, uh, okay. Yeah, my parents were pissed. <laughs> um, well, more my mother was pissed, but still, they. Yeah. Uh, they basically, you know, because they weren't going to not let us use this gift that my godfather had sent us, they put a rule that we could only play video games for one hour a day. So for the majority of my life, I was limited to one hour a day of video games. But still, it was the thing that, like, drew me the most. Yeah. Gaming and, and this concept of these created worlds or these uh, puzzles or these these competitions online uh was something that always just drew to me yeah i remember having friends uh that growing up and i went over to their house and they said and we were only allowed to play on their xbox for uh, it was like i don't know if it was an hour or two hours but it was like all right xbox time is over and i thought like what like you let your parents limit your xbox time like what is <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you let them do that? And then I realized, like, obviously, you don't get to choose as a kid. It's like you're this is the rules of your family. But uh, yeah, yeah, that must have made it, uh, and it must have made it like even more special as this thing like that you you you're not allowed to do is something that you always that always makes you want to do something more, right? If if something's like kind of off limits. Yeah, absolutely. I think it definitely does make you want to do it a bit more. I know definitely my brother and I would find times to sneak extra time or, or anything that we could to, to play a little bit more and obviously eventually i was able to play a little bit more because i don't think on an hour a day you could become a pro gamer but yeah uh, at least growing up uh that was how it was uh -huh. 
So what it was? Uh, yeah, go ahead. What other games would you say? Or I guess you have one hour a day. But what other games would? What games would you say growing up that influenced you into thinking like, what is a good game? What makes a good game? Or is chess is like the first game that you played that's like, wow, this is this is interesting. But what 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 else did you have? Uh, Halo was a really big game for me. Uh, it was just uh yeah. just like a beautiful world and story that was created, and it was just an honestly just an excellent game i mean this the first off the story was great but also just even the multiplayer having your friends come over and and, and all playing together in some kind of having competition friendly competitions with each other i mean that that was so incredible that sense of community was one of the yeah. other like first games that i that i played i mean halo one through three and then halo reach uh i was a bit older i was able to play a lot more games at that time when reach came out and that was like my first kind of competitive game i didn't really yeah. play any tournaments but it was the first time that i played a game that had like a legitimate ladder mm-hmm. inside of it and me and a buddy got very very high ranked on the halo reaches like 2v2 arena ladder i think halo was the first game i ever watched like streaming of or like competitive gaming of uh, i don't know if it was the original halo but at some point it was either halo 2 or halo reach but it was like the mlg circuit i remember watching and them describing the battle rifle bloom and like the fact that you couldn't just uh, you couldn't just hold the trigger down. You had to like let wait for the bloom to come back to the middle for your perfect accuracy to wait the extra quarter second. So you could fire every second, but if you waited a quarter and uh, a second and a, another quarter second and fired, all your shots would be way more accurate. And uh, that was the first time I was like, oh wow, there's actually skill in this game. This is the first time I like video games can have like skill in them. Like there's like a, a you don't just like press the buttons and things happen. Obviously, the fighting games have been around forever and StarCraft and all that, but like a shooting game, having the skill involved was really interesting to me. Yeah, it's the extra levels because there's the baseline skill, but then there's thinking of it on a more cerebral level and thinking deeper into the game than you ever would have thought by just looking at it on the surface. And I think that's like a big thing in competitive gaming is there's very surface level stuff that you can have, but then it's about kind of finding what's hidden beneath the cracks. And then, how did you get into? Um, I want to. I want to talk about heroes, but I want to talk about your lead up into this idea of becoming competitive. What 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 changed in your mind, and what from Halo Reach onward? What what changed to get you to start doing competitive stuff, uh, getting into that that realm of the world of of competitive games? Yeah, so I had played. Um, I played World of Warcraft uh, during Classic when I was like eight years old on a shitty Dell computer and dial up internet. Okay. And I had, I played. Um, a little bit during VC, a little bit during Wrath. And uh, it wasn't until Kata that I started playing a lot more. I got my own computer, like a much nicer computer. Um, and I started playing uh, WoW on that. Um, but I started doing like uh, rated battlegrounds in Kata. And uh, I started getting pretty high rated. And I was like, wow, I really like competing. And it was... It was absolutely just uh, this incredible um, feeling to me. And uh, from there, it was like, I kind of want to keep finding things that are more competitive. So I uh, I went to um, League of Legends. I saw League of Legends. Like, WoW was down one, one time, and I uh, had to go uh, play something else for a little bit. So I went to play League. And it was uh, it was so much fun to me. Just these like this this team oriented game. When I'd grown grown up playing sports, this five v five. I'd been doing the ten v ten as our rated battlegrounds. I'd done some arena, but this five v five. This format was just like the greatest thing to me. I'm mobile. I'd never played Dota. I'd never played any of that. Okay. But this format in League of Legends was just like this is amazing. And so I was like started grinding League, but I never played ranked. I had this ranked anxiety, so I just played normal games for. <laughs> Like a yeah, thousand yeah, yeah. normal games with my friends. And uh, s- throughout season two, I never like played any ranked. And season three came along and uh, some kids at my school wanted to play um, play a tournament. And uh, they were missing one of their normal people. And uh, another one of my friends was like, hey, you should try and go play. And I was like, I was like, gold or something or silver Mm -hmm. and all of these other kids at my school that were wanting to play this tournament were like platinum diamond 
But they were like, sure, yeah, come play. <laughs> like, come play this tournament with us, whatever. Did they let you and play support? What did you play? I, I was playing mid. It was the role they needed. They needed a mid laner, a mid and that was the wow. that was the role that I I and played. They, wow. Okay. All right. Well, I, mean, I yeah. don't know why they trusted me to come play. Yeah. It was crazy. But they they had me come, and we like dunked on everybody at the tournament. And wow. like, I was playing really well. Like, I was doing everything pretty well. I didn't have that many rank games, so I think they were just like, I don't, I don't know, this guy. I'm not even sure how good this guy's supposed to be. Okay. So they were like, okay, this guy's pretty good. Uh, and at that tournament, they were like, oh, you should just join our team like full time as like a sub. I was like, okay. So I joined as a sub and I was like actually started playing ranked. And I ended up climbing to like uh, plat one within like a month or something yeah. from silver. And then uh, soon after that, I ended up going up to diamond one before challenger was a thing so i was like diamond one 99 lp wow. or before masters was a thing so challenger existed but i was diamond one 99 lp you know gain zero lp on every single win uh unless you win like fucking 15 in a row that you can get into challenger wow and uh yeah i was playing like a bunch of different tournaments and and all these different things and uh i just never could cut it into the pro league uh for league Got it was it. all like i i played amateur tournaments across the united states i you know flew to uh, virginia i flew to california I flew, d played tournaments everywhere but i could never crack the uh the like challenger circuit we played uh challenger fives to try and qualify that's how it used to be mm -hmm. there was this uh you would play challenger fives and the highest top like ranked teams would play in a tournament to get in and we got into that tournament like a couple times and lost every time and could never just never could crack it and eventually i think like i slowly didn't adapt to seasons as well because i was i was a kid i was young mm. i didn't have the mental for it how, how old were you when you say kid i just wanted uh i was probably 15 okay yeah maybe 16 yeah so i just didn't have the mental to really do that to, to, to continue to like fail even though I was doing something successfully I, I was yeah. a kid that um I struggled with depression for a long time before I even got into that it was like I had hit my rock bottom uh in high school I had a I had attempted suicide and uh, this was just before all this like uh League of Legends stuff kind of came to me and I started working hard on that mm -hmm. so I was never in a, a great mental state while I was doing all that yeah yeah so eventually, uh, I, you know, was just kind of slowing down on the league stuff. I was trying still, but it was trying not in the right ways, you know. It was always, I was always, in my mind, I was always blaming my teammates in solo queue and blaming this and blaming that. And never just looking back on myself and realizing that I was the issue and I needed to fix myself in order to get better. Okay. So eventually, when I went to uh, when I went to school, I went to college. Uh, I went to the University of Utah, and I was going to play on the collegiate team. And I was like, "This will be a good way to get into the pro scene." That was always like in my head, and it was like, "Yeah, yeah." I, this collegiate team was full of like plat players, and I'm the only like good player. Like we're not going to beat anybody, right? But then you realize that, and it sucks. It's like, of course, I would want to help these people, but I still didn't have that like mental. And I slowly gained a later appreciation from it uh, when I was playing with my friends who invited me to play Heroes of the Dorm. Now, I'd never played Heroes of the Storm before. This is the first time I was playing it. Okay, wow. But they, they were like, okay, so he's the best League of Legends player at the college. This is another MOBA. We've got some good Heroes players. Let's, let's give it a shot. So yeah. they, 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 this was one of my very best friends from high school. He's like, hey, come play this. So we do that, and probably a month in, I'm already the best player on the team, and I'm starting to lead the team. And there was a lot of things that my my friend kind of said to me and encouraged me and just showed me that I could be such a good leader, and I could be someone like that to others. And I think it helped me realize that I need to be that kind of leader and that kind of encouragement to myself and do things differently than I had done in the past. And oh, so... I want to pause you for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Because uh, you've been going on, and I, I really appreciate it. But I wanted to like inject some of myself so you know where I'm coming from. Um, absolutely. You said, uh, 
You said your depression, your your lowest low was uh, early in your life, like 13 or 12-ish, you're saying. Uh, for me, and I find this funny, that uh, I think it's a really big problem. I think more people uh, have it, and a lot, especially if I, you look around Twitch, you look around Twitter, you look around uh, just the world in general, uh, the depression is this thing. I, for me, it was 20 is my, my early 20s was my lowest low. Um, and uh, I, I think uh, people... Like even through high school, I was depressed, and all the way into into college, but I didn't know I was depressed, and I didn't know what depression was. I even saw all these commercials online about depression, uh, about like, you know, like, are you depressed? Come see, come get Voltras or whatever the hell drug they were peddling at the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it was like a sad woman sitting on her like sitting on like a park bench, and like everything's gray, and there's like one gray flower in her hand or something. Whatever it was, those were so like depression was like this. Like, uh, I want to say carnival or, or clown like or this like weird like thing that like yeah it, it people say it exists but it's just a bunch of drug companies peddling drugs trying to get people to so like when people say well, are you depressed I'm like no I have a family I have a fam I have friends I have all these things like there's no reason I should be depressed I have nothing wrong with me like there's nothing wrong in my life I'm going to college I'm successful I'm I've got I've gotten a decent GPA like why would I be depressed um. Until it wasn't like until I could no longer function, and then all of a sudden everything started going away. I was like, "Oh, that's I yeah, I was depressed the whole time." So I really like it when people mention their depression, not because it's good or fun that anyone goes through that, but there are other people out there, and if anyone's listening, I really want them to to help themselves basically. And it really is a a big thing in my life that depression is such a it's real, and like and and if you're like like I would cry myself to sleep in a pillow. Like, and this is not Been about there. video games, but just like, Been and, there. but like, and I didn't know why I was crying. I have no, I had no intention of crying or like, I had nothing I was crying about. I just remember being like, just emotionally drained. And I literally remember thinking in my head, and, and this is getting really off uh, what I've, but thinking like, I, this is my weekly cry session. I bottle my emotions up and I need to uh, uh, let this out. Healthily, this is a healthy escape for me to let it out in my bed when no one has to worry about it. I'll do it alone, and then no one else has to deal with it. Only me. I remember thinking that in my head, like, okay, that's my weekly emotional release, and then we're gonna go back to being alive and doing things and whatever. And it was like years until I finally got help. So anyway, if you got out there, uh, go see a doctor and and say like, maybe I got depression. Think about it. Just think about it. That's all. Yeah, reach out for sure. It's it's very important. If you let it bottle up too much, it's definitely it tends to explode and it's better to to talk to people talk to your friends talk to everybody share your emotions let it let it flow yeah there's no reason to bottle up no reason to hide it nothing to be ashamed of yeah anyway okay so here's the dorm where you start there and you're, you yeah. play for a month and now you're the best player on this team playing heroes and you're, you're feeling the leadership you're feeling the power what what's what's going on there um uh, yeah so it, it was very but it, it very much was like this learning experience of like i need to do this better if i'm gonna you know like i had this wake-up call from my friend just saying that i was like a a good leader but he he said a lot and it's hard for me to recall the exact mm -hmm. words um but he made me kind of understand you know that i don't I, I do these things for other people, but I never took a second to kind of look at myself and help myself, mm -hmm. help improve myself. And so through Heroes, I was having a lot of fun playing with my friends. Here's the dorm. We got like top 32 or something. And then we had to play this, um, this West Coast tournament that was part of Heroes of the... Uh, it was called Collegiate Coliseum. It wasn't part of dorm. It was like another collegiate thing that was going on at the same time that was for West Coast only. That's like the best way I can describe it. Okay. But so they didn't pay for us to go out. So we were like, shit, how are we even going to go out here? So we had to go get a sponsor that would help pay for all of us to get to California to go play this tournament. And so we, we all drive down in like a van from Salt Lake City uh, to Southern California, uh, the esports arena, and um, we go play this tournament. So at this tournament, uh, we end up playing against uh, Michael Udall and Akaface and Shot, their ASU team that ended up winning Heroes of the Dorm that year. Oh, wow. um, 
So they uh, they were all pro players, but back then there wasn't the HGC, so pro players could also compete in Heroes of the Dorm. Um, so these guys were competing in this collegiate tournament, and uh, we ended up losing uh, two of the games we got bodied. One game, I almost 1v9 to Zeratul. Uh, <laughs> but they uh, afterwards, we ended up like going in and getting Korean barbecue with them and hanging out and having a conversation. And Michael and Aka started talking to me and saying, hey, man, you should try and go pro. Like, you're actually really good. And this is like, I'd only been playing for like three and a half, maybe four months. Yeah. At this point. And uh, just kind of hearing that was like a a confidence boost to something that I had like started to give up on. I had started to think, okay, well, I'll just go to college. I'll play some collegiate stuff, you know, and I'll just work towards my degree. It was, I was never good in school. It was never something I wanted to do with school. It's just like, it it felt like the natural progression that you have to do. It's what everyone tells you that you have to do. You go to high school, you go to college, you get a degree, you start working. Mm -hmm. And so that was the only reason I was even there. I never wanted to be in school. I didn't want to do any of that. Right. I wanted to play games. I wanted to find a way that I could play games, either stream, compete, something like that. Yeah, I'm, and so, I'm, I'm the same way. Yeah. I remember going to school and just being like, well, this is what I have to do because this is... And I remember fighting and yelling at people about the system, being like, the system is garbage. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, like, why do I have to get a job? Like, why do I have to do anything? Like, oh, this is ridiculous. And like, I, obviously I'm older now and I like go look back at that and it's like a lot of dumb sense, but it's all like still in the same thing, in the same vein of my mind. Like, why? Like, why do we do this? Why do we go to college? Why do we do that? And, you know, it wasn't like a, here's the plan and here's like the, here's the map of like, okay, this is why, and this is how much money you'll make. And this is what the, this is the average rates. It was literally like, no, you do this because it was never like an actual reason. There was no, it was because that's why that's the way the world works. And like, I just literally, you just need someone to sit down and tell you like, here's the goals. Here's the reasons. Here's the why, here's the what, like, that's what you need. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, go ahead. What <laughs> added? So no, you, you, absolutely. Michael Noodle yes. tells you that you're, you should yeah. go pro. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, the Noodle. He's a good buddy of mine. He <laughs> ended up moving to Utah after um after HGC kind of blew up. So I was hanging out with him a bit after after that all oh, wow. happened. But yeah, but um, yeah. So so after that, I was like, okay, well, I'll I'll I'm gonna try and do this, right? So I actually dropped out of school. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was like, ah, this sucks. I don't want to do this. Right. I dropped out of school and I, I asked my dad, I said, Hey, can I stay with you? If you give me, you know, give me a year, I'll be a pro player. And, uh, about six months after I said that I qualified for the HGC. Wow. And, um, it was like a crazy moment for sure. It was like validation of, of pretty much at that point six maybe seven years of hard work yeah um and i'd finally made it to a point where it was like you you can turn this into a career this this can be your career is exactly what you wanted to do the dream that you've been fighting for Mm -hmm. you can finally do it and the hgc was great i mean it was it was a there, there we had complaints we always had complaints but at the end of the day i mean it was it was my dream job is what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I had all kinds of other stuff going on in my personal life at the time, but it didn't matter because at the end of the day, I got to work on exactly what I wanted to be doing. And I think that's all that I continue to want to do too. And that's why I keep looking for more opportunities within esports. is I just want to work in esports. I want to find, this is like my passion, you know? Yeah. It's it's crazy like to talk about it to to people who don't know about video games and esports and being like I just it's just like it's so it's just what I want to do. I mean, like I, I talk not esports, but just being involved in the video game world, being involved in the video game industry. Uh, I would love to be involved in some kind of esport thing, but like not I I don't think I could ever compete. I'm not that good. Like I think I'm I'm decent at playing but I would never be able to be a professional. Like I play against, when we played heroes, I was like master, never got grandmaster. Like I was never like going to be able to get grandmaster. Um, unless I got, unless I got lucky in the, uh, the, the matchmaker or whatever the, the season, whatever. There was one season where like a ton of people got grandmaster or something. I forget. Oh, yeah. I forget. Like, yeah, it's a nightmare. It was, and it was like, it's just, a like, nightmare. Yeah. 
And then they were all these people that felt validated, like, uh, no, I am, yeah. I am a master too. And you're like, no, 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 this guy deserves to be in platinum. He does not deserve to be in there. Like, why is he in master? Like, yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah. All of the pro players had a fit. <laughs> it was not fun. Yeah, maybe I was one of those people. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I was that level. And I never like. I know. I know my limits. I can never be a professional player. But I just love video games, and I love like sharing that with people. And literally, um, I work at Starbucks right now, and uh, people come in, and literally, I, all I want to do is talk to them about video games. Because anyone here, like everybody, who comes in. I'm just looking for a tattoo. I'm looking for a. I'm looking for a backpack. I'm looking for an Overwatch sticker. Like anything. Like oh, come on, come on. No, nothing. Okay, next person's fine. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's a uh, I don't know. It's a big, beautiful world of mm-hmm. diverse people, interesting stories. I mean, I I I love this space. It's it's where I want to be. It's what I want to do, and it, it sucked. I mean, yeah, you know when 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 it came crashing down, which I know you may want to talk about. People always want to talk about it for sure. It's like yeah. it's definitely. It's like an interesting thing is uh, basically Blizzard killing off the HCC. Yeah, I've talked um, about it. I literally talked about it last week with someone who's never played Heroes of the Storm. So I, uh, I was, I had a, a guy on and he plays Magic the Gathering competitively. And, and it was literally like, a, I was like, did you ever hear about the HGC? <laughs> I was like, this is, I remember watching every, like I had all these bits and I, cheer, I have all the emotes and all the cheer stuff. And, oh my God. And all that. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Did you ever hear the tragedy of the yeah, HGC. it's not a story the blizzard will tell you <laughs> yeah there you go yeah um but yeah it was um i definitely definitely felt like my life was over when that happened you know wow. i had a rough i had a rough few months following the announcement i mean we were told we were told leading up to it that we were gonna have hgc like yeah it was it, we, we we had been told the opposite um so we're just you know grinding away i I was uh, I was working with the I was working with a couple different teams that I was trying out for. I had my spot, but I was uh, I was trying out for some of the top uh, North American teams mm-hmm. at the time. So I was grinding really hard. I was like top five on the ladder. Uh, I had like an eighty percent win rate in Hero League. I was grinding super hard. I was playing some of the best heroes I had ever played. Um, and then in the middle of a scrim, uh, one of the people on the other team, I think it was Dansky. I think we were squint. I was scrimming against. Oh my god! Uh, oh my god uh, who was Dansky playing for at the time? I can't remember, but I was I was scrimming against Dansky, and I just remember uh, him seeing an all chat, uh, check your email, and then Dansky has left the game, and we were like, "What the fuck? Okay, that's kind of strange. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you leave the scrim?" And we go check our email, and uh, yeah, we got the. The exact email. I actually probably have the email. <laughs> uh, but basically, it was just saying that HGC would not be continuing. Um, and from there, I do actually have the email. <laughs> would you like me to read the official email sent to HGC professionals on December 13th, 2018? If you want to, you can. Yeah, I don't. But uh, I don't want to make you relive some tragedy here. No, that's all right. I think basically, yeah. So we were doing that, and we we received the email. It just said, "Greetings, HGC professionals." Greetings. It is, yeah. It is with a heavy heart that we bring you the news that the Heroes Global Championship will not return in 2019. We want to thank you for everything you've given to the community and this game for the past two, or more in many cases, years. The hard work and love you poured in this scene are the big reasons why the league had such a passionate fan base uh-huh. and the level of competition you played out was a treat to witness. We had some incredibly epic games, some of the most animated crowds, and some hilarious moments. The players, thank you again for everything you've given to the HGC. Words aren't enough to describe what your commitment means. To the casters, thank you for being the ones to bring these games to our fans' homes and showcasing our league around the world. Oh my God. To the owners with the, N- the HGC, thank you for caring for the players and supporting them through their journey. This may be the end of this particular esports chapter, but we look forward to seeing what each of you do next. Your HGC administration. Yikes. Now, five minutes later, they released the public announcement. Yeah. So we basically found out five minutes early yeah. that it was over. And um, yeah, it was really, really hard. Uh, 
some of us tried to throw ourselves into another game pretty much instantly, myself included. I started playing League of Legends again. Yeah. Uh, first two weeks, I grinded my way up to Diamond 1, I believe. Um, but eventually, I burnt myself out. I was playing far too much. I was trying to play the same hours that I was playing when I was grinding for the HGC, but I obviously wasn't being paid. I obviously didn't have scrims, so yeah. it was just solo queue grinding. And that was too much, I think, for where I was at in my headspace at the time. So, you know, it's always like hard to process. And it took me a long time to kind of accept what had happened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure that I even have moved on. I, I say I do. I feel like I do. But I'm not sure that I, I truly have. Um, yeah, but I at the end imagine. of the day, it's like I'm just now moving forward in whatever avenues in esports that i can because i want to stay involved in in this like i want to hold on to this mm -hmm. there's nothing else that i want to do you know i want to be involved in the competition whether i'm a pro whether i'm a commentator whether i do a podcast yeah there's plenty of things that i can do and i just want to be involved i hear you uh, yeah so podcast, let's talk about it. So on, on Twitter, and this is how I, I, I know I followed you from Heroes, but uh, on Twitter, all of a sudden, I heard you talking about, you know, I want to do a podcast. What do you guys think about me? And me and Crowan had this great conversation, and I want to do a podcast now where we have like conversations like that, where we get deep, we get talk. We, I mean, we learn about people behind the camera, behind the streamer, behind the, the, the competitive thing, when they're not playing or whatever's going on. And I was like, hey, I... I, that's like I, I love that's my podcast. I do that. I want <laughs> like I, I talk to people like every week. I have a person on. Um, so what are you gonna do? What's what's, what's the plans going forward here for for you? Since we don't have HGC, what's the well? First off, we got we can talk about WoW in a bit because that's also something that yeah, I love. Yeah, we'll um, but uh, what what about the podcast? Tell me more about what's your plans for it and like uh, if you need any help, of course I'm always I'm always able. But uh, what uh, what's your what's your plans going forward here? Yeah. So. Yeah, the the story of it I think is pretty pretty funny for for how it even came to be that I'm going to make this podcast because mm -hmm. I'm going to make it and it's it, I'm trying to get it out before the end of January, of course. Um, but yeah, basically I was still awake at one p.m. as normal people do. You know, they stay up all night until yeah. one p.m. Right. Um, and I I just was thinking a lot about like what I wanted to do, different shows to do because I've been working with Heroes Hearth Entertainment uh, and Giant Slayer TV. Uh, just commentating TFT and and making different shows and stuff for those uh, their Twitch and YouTube channels, and so I was just like thinking about different stuff and I and I kind of had this idea for a podcast based on like you said a conversation I had had with Crowen in Japan about uh, a year ago. Um, so I tweeted it out because I wanted to hold myself ac accountable because I have a lot of ideas that I put in notes and then I never do anything with them. Right. So I was like, if I tweet it, then people will get mad at me if it's a good idea and I don't do it. So I was like, okay, I'll tweet it. And I started getting notifications. So I was like, oh, okay, well, that's good. And I was like, I really need to sleep though. So I set my phone down, go to sleep, and I wake up and I've got like 100 notifications. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right. So let's, let's, let's make this. So basically what it was is when I was in Japan with, uh, with Crowen, uh, we were doing IRL streams and we ended up in a coffee shop in, uh, I think Shinjuku that, uh, was just this really cool little place. And we were just like, we want to hang out here until the, uh, clubs open, which was like probably an hour and a half away. So we were like, all right, let's hang out. And we decided to have me go on a date with Twitch chat. So basically, we uh, just put the camera facing me, and we let Twitch chat ask me questions, and Crowan asked me a couple questions as well, and it got pretty deep. We were talking about a lot of uh, kind of my story about how I got to where I am, and uh, I thought that was that was like a really some of the most brilliant content we've ever put out, and it was just <laughs> us randomly doing that yeah. in in Shinjuku. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring on creators and pro gamers and, and anyone involved in this space and just give a platform to for people to tell their stories right to, to to go to areas that maybe we wouldn't talk about normally or 
or even ever talk about in the esports space. I feel like a lot of times uh, people look at creators and pro players as someone who's just really good at the game or a funny character that they like to watch on Twitch. Mm -hmm. But I think people really do want to connect at a more emotional, spiritual level with these creators, with these people that they follow. And so giving this opportunity for them to come share their struggles, the trials that they've faced, the tragedies in their life that have led up to them doing what they're doing now is something that would be really important and impactful in a lot of people's lives. So that's, I mean, that's the podcast that I'm, I'm creating and uh, I've gotten some help from, from a couple people already. So we're working on a lot of production and branding and, and, and marketing and stuff for it to get it out. Nice. Uh, which is slowing down the release of it, but increasing the quality of it by a lot. <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's the trade-off, right? I mean, I was just going to do it on my own channel, uh, uh, not knowing anything about podcasting. And, you know, I, I personally, I'm not actually that tech savvy. I'm just very good at video games. That's, you know, okay. that's how it is. So, so it probably, you know, I don't think personally I would have done that great of a job because I'm not very tech savvy. So it's going to be nice having this background support of these, uh, these other people helping me out. I'm not sure if they're allowing me to announce anything with them yet. So okay. I can't say All right. that, but I have people helping me uh, nice. to make this a, a reality. And I'm very excited to get it done and get it out. Yeah, I think it's something people like. I Just from personal experience from my podcast, I think people enjoy hearing the behind the scenes uh, look into the people, they their content. Like I had, I've had people tell me like, oh, that was a really great episode. I really liked hearing from that person because I didn't really know who that person was until I listened. Like I didn't really know who, I didn't really know them. Like I, I, I watched their stuff on YouTube or whatever. And then I didn't really get, I didn't, I don't, I don't get their sense of humor or who they are as a person really until I listened. And I was like, Oh, that's really great. I'm really happy that people enjoy that. Um, so I'm looking forward to it, man. I can't wait. And like, there's so many people, there's so many people that I've just like, there's no way that like one person can interview them all. I'm so I'm saying. So when you were like, I'm going to do that. I was like, hell yeah. Like I'll listen to that. I'll listen to that again. I'll, I, um, so yeah, it's going to, it sounds great. What um so let's talk about let's talk about wow. Do I still got you here? Yeah, okay. yeah, you got me. Got you. All right. right here. Just making sure. Let's talk about wow. I get you you talked about playing classic uh when you were like eight. So this is during your one hour video yeah. game time? Or was this uh, it, it was in fact during my one hour video game time and you and you and I both know that you can't get a lot done in classic wow in an hour. Yeah. I guess you were uh, leveling. Especially as an eight year old. Yeah. Oh my heart so... stone's off cooldown. I gotta I gotta stop playing now. Like, right. Yeah, there we go. Um, so yeah, so I never really got like super high level class. I think, uh, I think even in BC, I don't even know if I got max level. I think during both those expansions, I had like an hour a day, so I ended up getting to like level fifty six by the end of BC, right? Gotcha. And then, uh, but I, I played like an orc hunter, which is what I was gonna play when Classic came around. But then I joined uh hero because um one of the the original founder of hero kala uh yeah. he invited me to come play and they needed certain classes so they were like oh we're gonna need a uh, rest of shamans and i was like sure yeah yeah i'll just play shaman that'll be fun like shaman sounds really fun i wanted to play in enhance so i was like mm -hmm. okay well i'll play resto and i'll play some enhance and pvp is an off spec and what be be great and like the for, for like you know, this is like a year before classic we're talking about this and i'm like yeah like the only thing i want is eventually to get a hand of rag right i was like that's the only thing in classic that i eventually <laughs> want to do and uh yeah so we ended up uh making hero played some private servers before launch to kind of get acquainted with the game and then we set up for the the world first uh mc race and, and world first uh, an ixia race and mm -hmm. all that stuff Things didn't really go as planned <laughs> with uh with the guild. Uh, we're we're no longer part of Hero. We, we, there's a different guild that we're a part of now. Um, uh, that is a little bit more serious and competitive. Um, but yeah, everything I do is competitive. So we we want to even though this content's been d done, it's like speedrunning content, right? Yeah. Like you want to you want to go for those like world first kills because it's like speedrunning. Like how fast can we do it? Mm -hmm. like how tight knit can this group of people be and, and get it done so after we left hero 
uh, we made the guild uh, nope with a couple people from private servers that were um, uh, playing in hero that were like raid leading for us. Uh, and they're like really good players and we, we liked them a lot when we were in hero. So we're like, okay, we'll go join this guild with them. Uh, we made nope. And in our first raid, which I was in Europe raid logging because I was on a month long vacation in Europe. So I would log in at like 3 a.m. once a week to <laughs> to do the raid. And this one day in particular, we were in Berlin. I was with uh, Crowen again, uh, Crowen Tomster, who are two um, ex Here's the Storm pros, mm -hmm. and uh, May, who works for C9. Um, and so we were we were all there. It was in Berlin, and I had gotten like food poisoning. I was like sick. Oh my god! And I was like, I was so unhappy there. <laughs> uh, and so I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna raid. I'm gonna go to sleep. But there was just like something tugging at me. It's like the first raid as the new guild. And I was like, okay, well, we need everybody here. Everybody's yeah. got to be here. Mm -hmm. So I was like, all right, I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to get on. They barely need me, but I'm going to just toss a couple heals. Like, I'm sure my healing parses were awful because I don't think I like fake cast at all. I just hard casted heals into the tank and hoped our DPS killed it fast enough. I was like, <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, I'm a tank healer. I, it doesn't matter. So I was like, spamming heals. Finally, we get the rag. We kill rag. It was a pretty quick raid. It was only like probably an hour and a half or something, uh, hour forty five or something. And uh, we kill rag. <laughs> Fucking eye ragnaros drops. Yeah, you're the eye of sulfurous drops on our very first raid as a guild. And I didn't know who's gonna get it, but everyone else in the raid just said Gratz Casa. Wow. And and so apparently they had all decided that I was gonna be the one who was gonna get it. Because I think they all knew, because a lot of them had played on the private server leading up to the launch of Classic, that that was the only thing I wanted in the game. It yeah. was the only thing that I wanted to get when I played Classic WoW. Was, uh, it was a Hand of Rack. And so when it dropped, they just all said Gratz Casa. They dropped that shit in my inventory. Wow. And, uh, That's awesome, dude. After that, I mean, as a guild, we, we built it together. We were a brand new guild with only one raid team and no money. So it was like, Took us a long time. It was the horde first. Uh, I wow, and then Cdu got his twelve hours later, and they built it instantly <laughs> because yeah. they had a big guild. Uh, it took us another like month and a half to finish the the hammer, but but eventually we did it, and then I got take my uh take my hand of rag around. Prox some wind oh, fury oh on God, some, some fools. Oh my god, I'm just having and it's just... it's been so much fun. Yeah, I've been playing a shaman, and literally people are asking me, like, well, what are you going to play? And I was like, oh, I've always played shaman throughout all of World of Warcraft. I started in vanilla with a mage, and I got to, like, level... I got to 60... Or, no, I got... I, I didn't even hit 60 before Burning Crusade. And then Burning Crusade came out, and I ended up getting 70 on my mage first. But then I leveled a shaman, and I never played my mage again. Like, I got to 70 on my shaman, and I never played my mage again. And I've been playing Elemental forever since Wrath of Lich King... We like did like realm first heroic twenty five man lich king and like we 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 and then I stopped playing in Kata. I came back a couple times during different expansions, but I've always played a shaman and I just love shamans and like I remember when the 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 classic the thing you got for um, the classic demo came out the thing you got for BlizzCon twenty I don't know seventeen eighteen probably twenty eighteen and it allowed you to play for like two days they opened it you could play a level 15 character in classic and i put down a searing totem and i just was like lost it i was just like this is amazing this game's amazing <laughs> i can put down searing totems again like i have searing totem it's there it's just it's back like my totem buddy he's there he's screaming and he's firing fireballs at anything that comes near him for no particular reason uh oh my god it's so good so yeah, and I said, so "What are you gonna play?" And everyone, I I played Resto for like two weeks, and I was literally like, "I can't do this, guys. I cannot." You're falling asleep at your keyboard. Yeah, yeah. I can, I cannot <laughs> cast Chain Heal more often. Like this is like killing me. Like this is the worst. Like and streaming it, like I'm streaming streaming Resto Shaman. I'm just like clicking. I right, him is okay. It's Chain Heal that guy. Oh, I have to heal a tank. All right. And like yes, there are small moments where you can like, uh, you know, top your DP healing meters with like. I see the breath coming from from uh, Anixia, so I know I can start ca hard casting a heal, and as soon as the heal's over, the breath will go out, and the heal will come out, and he'll be full healed again if he doesn't resist. But like, yeah, little things like that. Yeah, okay, th that's okay, that's fun. But those are so few and far between as a as a healer. 
Anyway, enhancement, I was like, and so all I want is rag, hand a rag. And I just want you to go on record, and I want everyone to know, and anyone who's listening who's in my guild, that no warrior should get hand of rag. I agree. I, I hard agree. It was like... <laughs> I I I love uh, raiding as uh, as enhanced because it's so uh, adrenaline pumping because mm-hmm. you never know when you're just gonna rip thread off the boss and get one tapped. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I hold on, guys. I have to wait twenty seconds to start attacking this boss because I don't want to pull thread. Because your wind fury prox <laughs> generates so much threat that uh-huh. it's like. We just we meme about it all the time that I'm just gonna lose my buffs. I go get world buffs, like full world buffs, like our guild always, you know, trying to speed clear. Yeah. And uh and I'll come in and I look at those first two molten giants and I'm horrified. Yeah. Because we had one time where I got full world buffs. I walked up, Wind Fury proc once, Wind Fury proc twice on the first giant, it yeah. turned and crushing blow crit me and one shot me and I lost all my world buffs. Oh my god. And I was like, never, never again, never <laughs> again will I have this. Like we, my, our shadow priest, which is Kahlo, which is a, he's a very good friend of mine. Uh, he has started to, he has a macro that just casts power word shield on me. And he just <laughs> presses it every time I don't have weakened soul. So I just have a pre-shield at all times. That's awesome. Because I've pulled threat so many times and just died because yeah, like, I even believe, if I, I wait, myself, yeah. yeah, even if you wait, you're just going to, I don't have hand of rag. So I, <laughs> yeah, I saw you running around with an unstoppable force though. So that's a pretty good weapon. At least. Yeah. Yeah. I had the Finkels and I got, I got the AV grind done. So I got that, that unstoppable force. It's, it's yeah. But I, I don't feel like I can attack. And then also everyone memes me for not being top DPS. Listen, if you want me to be top DPS, I'm pulling threat and I'm going to die. Like if I'm, Look, if, <laughs> if you want me to be top DPS, I'm re-rolling warrior. Like I, oh, that's true too. Yeah. You can never flame an enhanced shaman for not being top DPS. They're just not going to do it. Right. No, but it, well, they're, I get, I get memed. Uh, basically the guild is just joking. Like, uh, like, yeah. haha, you're, you're, you'll, you'll never be top DPS. I'm like, listen, if you want me, I will, I, I've not, I'm not joking. Like if, if I have mana, I can top DPS on these fights with the guild of mana. Maybe that's bad for my guild more than it's good for me. Uh, but I just have to get an early crit and I have to get a couple win free procs and I will top these damage meters because as long as my flurry's rolling, I'm good. Yeah, but, you can pump some deeps. For but I'm sure. gonna pull threat because I'm critting on the first hit or getting a wind fury proc on the first hit, and and then I'm gonna die because the the mob's gonna turn and kill me. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, our tanks have gotten a lot better at taunting quickly though because of me. I will say that. <laughs> oh, so that's what you're doing. You're just training them. I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm teaching them. It how was to all be a mind tanks. game. Yeah, that's what I should tell them too. I, I they're they're good players, but sometimes you get hit one. Sometimes the you know blossom comes out, or they get stunned by a core hound, or you know, whatever happens. Yeah, you just you just die, man. You just gotta eat it. it. Happens. Yeah, I love playing enhance. It's so good. I'm that's awesome. That are you gonna go back to resto for Blackwing Lair? Uh, I think my guild has said that I have to for the world first race, but then after that, I okay. will be. That makes sense. I will be. Uh, enhance. Yeah, it was hilarious when I first built the uh, hand of rag, and I walked into. Orgrimmar with eight of eight tier one and a hand of rag. <laughs> <laughs> every time, yeah, every time I see a person with hand of rag and they're wearing like all tier one gear, I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And then I see a warrior with it, I'm like, why? Oh god, yeah. no! Like, and I don't know, I don't even know if my guild is tier one. Make it, cop ban, choker of enlightenment. And yeah. of rag. <laughs> it was definitely a funny thing. I went and walked up to Pills, the GM of Hoagie Haven Heroes, and. <laughs> laughing at him because he didn't quite have his uh eight set finished and also i had a hand of rag so. oh my god yeah yeah it feels like resto shamans everyone's pining for resto shamans like I, my guild is constantly trying to recruit resto shamans because nobody wants to chain heal forever i can't i, can't, I just can't even imagine. yeah i mean i was a tank healer so i never casted chain heal in my life i only cast a uh, healing wave healing wave on okay. one target mm-hmm. forever yeah I could do and actually. I would. I would rather do that. I think than cast chain heal, because it might be better. Because you actually get to build a personal relationship with one person as opposed to the forty people that are all <laughs> like. And I've said this before that they're just they're just shitting their diapers and I'm changing their diapers constantly because they're just standing in fire and I'm just like God. It's chain heal. Yeah, yeah, and it's all about the timing stuff you talked about with mm-hmm. like uh, waiting for them to get hit and making sure your heal casts at the same time to make sure they're always topped off. There's a fun mini game on it, but it does get pretty resident sleeper in Molten Core because 
Molten Core is just so like easy. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, it's just like it's very trivial. Oh my god! Uh, I do. But I think Blackwing Layer might be might be. F I'm hoping it's hard. That's it's all. Not, that's all I'm hoping I, for. I, I don't think it's gonna be. I like so. Like yeah, I look at. I don't it, think it will be either. I'm just imagining, dude. World first is gonna be whoever is able to log in and get in there. Like, it's gonna be like two, three hours. It's, I don't. Th I don't it's think gonna it's gonna be an attunement race again. Oh right, which you is get attunement. Yeah. Right. It's gonna be like whoever has the best strategy for getting their attunement done and then doesn't mess up once they get into the dungeon i yeah. think it's gonna be it's gonna be the, that day yeah. it's insane how quick oh yeah no it'll down. definitely be that day 100 mm -hmm. percent. i think apes uh will probably get world first i mean they're really really quick mm -hmm. i think apes will get it done i want to predict uh two and a half hours Nah, we'll we'll say we'll say a clean three hours after uh the instance opens yeah, I don't have any it private is. server experience, so I don't even know how long it takes to get attuned or what the whole process is. I just remember. You I don't know it either. Yeah. I I didn't even hit sixty on the private server I was playing on with those people. We just were kind of like learning the early routes so that we could uh, level quickly for the molten core race because gotcha. that was that was more a leveling grind race than it was a um, uh, an instance race. I mean, yeah, it was just getting it, enough uh, people in there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, we we were doing these basically playing for twenty four hours. And then sleeping for like four to six hours, mm -hmm. and then playing another twenty-four, and we did that until we hit sixty. Um, and that was, I mean, that was wild. I, I, I streamed the entire thing. We were playing a melee cleave, doing dungeons the oh entire time, God, dungeon dude. grinding. Mm -hmm. And melee cleave s sounded like a good idea, but we quickly realized that just having like any mage in any group just has speeds yeah. you up so much. <laughs> Dude, but like we just, we oh did God. it. We beat so many mage groups as as enhancement shaman, mm -hmm. uh disc priest, and then uh two warriors three warriors. Mm -hmm. Wait, two warriors in a rogue, actually. Two warriors in a rogue. And we beat a bunch of mage groups because we just, you know, we had the power of friendship. Yeah. You know? It was mm -hmm. just a bunch of ex hots pros and gummy bear. <laughs> who's uh he was an analyst for Team Blaze. If you remember that one, you're a real one. Blaze is that, is that that was a was that a North American that was team? Here's, here's the storm North American team oh. pre HGC era. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I know the I can the name is familiar, but I can't remember who played in it. Yeah. I I think huge Brent, Cladius Jason. Uh, who else was on the team? I, I started playing Did heroes. At some point? I started playing heroes when they released uh, a new Brack and Chen together during the beta. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, a, oh, Raffle Copter, Raffle Copter, and Battery were the last two. Raffle Copter, Battery, Huge Cladius, and Jason. That was the team. I think I remember. Gummy Huge Bear Cladius. was an analyst for them. Yeah, but yeah, so it was me, Gummy Bear, uh, Fury, who is a tank player for Tempo Storm, and mm -hmm. then most recently LFM, uh, Dark Camara, who was also playing for LFM at the time, and uh, wow. and then to uh, Tomster, and uh, yeah, we were we just we grinded it all out. It was an experience wouldn't trade it for anything <laughs> yeah man oh my god but i i guess yeah if i had a if i had a, a large group maybe i would have been enjoyed it but like just the random people trying to get dungeon cleaves together with the randoms you're like no, no. that like, oh i couldn't god. imagine yeah. uh, that sound that sounded so horrible i i knew people who did it it sounded so yeah. awful and then uh then mages dude i can't talk enough shit about mages and warriors <laughs> They have it so easy, especially warriors who complain. I, any warrior who complains can, I, you know, it's your fault. You're a warrior. You get the <laughs> best. You're the best in the game at everything other than killing mages. And mages are just the best at, like, they just complete a group. Everyone's like, can we get a mage? True. I'd rather have a mage. Like, can we just it's the one mage? thing we've got as shamans. We can kill mages. We can kill mages, yeah. It's the one thing we've got. Yeah, <laughs> and even and it's not even true. Like, ma A good mage true. could probably could kill us. But, like, if you get, if you get, lucky with a good wind fury proc on them like there's just no reason they should ever you should ever catch up to a mage like there's no yeah reason. you have to kill them with shocks eventually yeah. you usually have to mana pot to beat them yeah <laughs> it just, they, just, they can just, just purge all their shields and shock them until they're dead it's pretty mm -hmm. much it ground all the polys or else you lose too yeah if you if they get a polymorph off on you you're dead like that's yeah like, you have to ground or kick the polys every time uh -huh. and then you just suck in it's oh my god it's a it's a trip yeah it's Ma a trip being mages, but yeah. you can. It's just pain. Yeah, I love it, dude. That's like the best thing in the world, though. Whenever a mage just crumples to a Winfury proc, that's like, oh, oh yeah. God. 
That's that's why I'm playing the class. That's why I played Enhance. Just to kill clothies, baby. Okay. Well, that's... I think I've kept you... It's been an hour we've been talking. And, uh... I never noticed time passing. Yeah. It's, uh... It's been awesome, dude, talking to you. And I, uh... Yeah, for sure. So, g- you do you have any shout-outs? Out. Do you have any things you want to talk about? That I mean, uh, follow them on, on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Casanova Hots. And at Casanova Hots on Twitter. Uh, until you get your check mark and you can change your name. Uh, if that ever happens. Yeah, you know, I have it on Twitch. I don't have it on Twitter. Probably not going to happen on Twitter for uh, however long. I don't know. Maybe if I go pro in another game, I can finally get yeah. my check mark. Someone you know? told me to go work for an organization that gives out check marks. Like, go work for, like, a, a news organization. And then, like, that's their that's the only reason you work for them is to get the Twitter check mark. Yeah, like, get Man. the check mark and then quit. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, no, I'm not doing, I'm not going to go do that. Yeah. Like, no, just, it's just, I mean, well, you get, like, you'll be able to network and stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't know. I'm not, 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 <laughs> so ridiculous. Yeah, Twitter I check marks. I'll, I'll shout out, yeah. So my Twitch and Twitter, Casanova Hots. My Instagram, which I rarely use, is Skylar Casanova Mulder. Uh, and then we have, um, I commentate TFT over on uh, Heroes Hearth, twitch.tv slash Heroes Hearth. I think we may be moving over to another channel, though, twitch.tv slash Giant Slayer TV. You can check those out on Twitter as well under the same handles. So I uh, sh- commentate TFT. I'll do a myriad of other shows with them. And then, uh, yeah, just keep your eyes out for my podcast. Just check my Twitter and you will know all the details on that. But thank nice. you so much uh john for having me on yeah dude no problem at all i'm really happy to have you it was it was, it was really fun for sure